Thank you very much. Uh, I won't be long because it's, we are a bit behind time. Um, I will talk about a little bit different ecosystems, urban ecosystems, non natural ecosystems, and I will present this algorithm that we have uh, developed to classify trees um, in cities. So, according to the United Nations, uh, in 2050, around 68% of the population will be living in cities. This uh, increase in population in urban areas um, have increased the tension of uh, green areas within cities. So, just put here a couple of examples the New York Deforestation Project, and here in Spain, in Madrid, we have this uh, metropolitan forest, which is a very recent uh, application of this uh, urban forest initiatives. The trees growing in cities suffer also the same stressors as natural trees in natural ecosystems like drought, heat waves, etc. But they also have specific stressors, like very poor soil uh, properties because the soil probably is, is most of the cases very shallow or they have, uh, they have um, inverse uh, horizons, if they have horizons, and, and also they suffer from vandalism. So, you know, it's important to, to monitor tree before performance in, in, in cities. So the first thing is to, to monitor tree performance is uh, from remotely and intelligence, uh, it is an intelligence perspective, is to classify those trees in cities. And that's what we try to, be, to do. So we use um, um, open data from Alcobendas, which is a, a city, a town, 15 kilometers north of Madrid, uh, with one, more than 100,000 uh, population. We, they have mapped all the trees in the city, uh, and it amounts to 35,000, more than 35,000 trees, with the species, the coordinates, and the height, and the diameter. Well, actually, it's uh, size classes, it's not it's the, the exact the actual diameter, but just the, the size uh, class of the tree. So this is an, an, an aerial view, this is a more dense park area, this is a solid tree, this is important. Um, more detailed perspective of the, of the mapping of the trees. So what we did is to obtain images from uh, Sentinel-2 uh, constellation. Uh, and we, we used the most clear image, we just looked for one year and try to find the most clear image without clouds. Then we extracted those very well-known indices like uh, NDVI and GNDVI. The first is a good indicator of, um, of uh, vegetation performance for young and intimidate age, and the green NDVI is more uh, accurate for um, uh, all trees, let's say. And we averaged the value over 5 meters radius uh, from the from the point that we have used, which is the coordinate of the tree. And we apply a random forest um, algorithm. This is a classification, it's um, many trees, I mean many classification trees altogether. That's where it's a forest. So our results are very promising. We were able to classify more than 70% of um, of uh, the species. Remember that we, the first step to monitor trees is to identify the species and then we need to follow up the, the performance of the, uh, of, the, of the point of the tree. We obtain the best score for isolated trees, uh, trees and because we have a lot of noise in the parks. I'll explain later in the uh, take home message final uh, why we think that. So, just a comparison of the lessons that we learned with this um, exercise, with this study. First, random forest is very time consuming, but it's probably for uh, improvement of the algorithm, it's much better to use other algorithms, like maybe a compilation of neural networks. It's important to, to when using uh, urban trees, it's important to first to identify those trees going in parks is more, a more dense situation than those trees that are growing in isolated places. And probably the improvement here will be to use different uh, scale, different uh, radius of averaging of NDVI. Probably it's much, much more smaller in, in, in parks than in open areas. Uh, 
Foreign trees is a very good opportunity to, to, to build very accurate um, uh, algorithms of classification algorithms. And we are, we, we, it is a challenge to try to apply this algorithm to natural forest ecosystems. But, you know, we, we, we will try to do that in the future. And the reason is that, uh, for example, in, in cities, uh, non-native species and, and are used to, you know, because for ornamental purposes. And these non-native species in natural ecosystems are um, invasive species. So if we uh, identify these non-native species um, accurately in cities using this data, uh, we think that we will be able to also to, to follow the, um, the invasion of these species in natural forest ecosystems. And finally, you know, we have used open data. This data of this uh, tree data and tree data is freely available on the websites of the uh, of the town hall of the, of the city. And uh, the idea is that many cities, more and more, it's much more common to have this open data. And, and yeah, we, we need to use this not only for training but also for for uh, testing the, the algorithm. And that's all. Yeah. <laughs>